All right, it is a beautiful spring afternoon here in the marshes of South Louisiana, and I'm in search mode, hoping to run across some speckled trout, but right now I'm gonna start targeting some redfish. Come along with me, let's see if we can catch anything at all. all right, I'm starting today with a shrimp creole matrix shad on a quarter ounce death grip jig head. You've seen my recent videos, you know I've been having great success with that green hornet. I really like that bait when it's cloudy or when the water's a little bit off. This water's really good. So I'm gonna start with the shrimp creole, see if we can get some bites on that. But we can always go to the green hornet if fish don't seem to want this. Now I fished this morning for a video, it was my last video I published, and the tide didn't move at all, not at all. Well, I can't say not at all, it was trickling, barely moving. Still, I caught a good number of fish, fishing bayous. So I'm gonna try something different this afternoon, fish some bigger water. I may settle on some bayous later, but right now I'm gonna try and fish some big water, see what we can catch. And we may not catch anything in this lake, but my goodness, it's full of bait. There should be some fish in here somewhere. Tide's way, way, way out. Not much water at all. In fact, my trolling motor is acting more like a screw going through this detritus, this shallow marsh bottom. All right, definitely a good bit of snot grass in here. I'm gonna throw this blade, see if I can stay above it. Gold blade team with a shrimp creole matrix shad and also a quarter ounce death grip. Very effective bait for both redfish and speckled trout. Underrated for speckled trout. All right, I'm gonna call an audible. There's not enough water in this little lake. It's super shallow. Plus it's full of snot grass. So you have to move on, try something different. I love exploring, but sometimes you run across stuff that just isn't fishable. I'm gonna fish this little pass between the lake I was in and the lake that I wanna fish, if it's got enough water. I know that this pass has some water, so I've run over it. See if we can find some trout in here. Okay, yeah, where we are, it's almost four feet. So there's definitely some water in here. Could be some trout. Definitely worth exploring. All right, I got some definite good news. I can tell in this little pass that the tide is now screaming in, and that's good. After enduring a morning with no tide movement, very little tide movement, it's nice to see it rising. Definitely sets us up for a good afternoon, for sure, for sure. Whew, yeah, tide screaming in, love it, love it. Oh, <laughs> look at that, a little bitty trout. He must have followed me up. Now I was plagued by little trout this morning. They were everywhere. Some kind of school of fish up there. Looks like it may just be mullet. Or it might be glass minnows. Bunch of them up here too. A lot of bait in here for sure. Lots and lots of bait. Lots and lots of bait. Man, what the heck is that? Oh. Oh. Good lord, three bites. Oh goodness. What in the world? Four bites. It's gotta be little trout running with these glass minnows. <laughs> Another bite. A lot of life in this lake. We're gonna catch some fish in here. Pretty water, moving water, and tons and tons of bait. What more could you ask for, right? That's what you want. Now the question, of course, is how big are the fish gonna be? Oh, there's one. That's a speck but it's not a keeper. Won't make the box. But at least we got a hook in this one. These little guys are moving with these glass minnows just to plague a little trout in the marsh. I mean, it's ultimately good because these fish within weeks will be legal. So you come back to these areas in April when you'll be catching legal fish. Oh, there's another one, missed him, missed him. I think he was the same size as the last. And there's another one, threw in his mouth. 
He feels a little bigger. Oh, he's snagged. He might be snagged. He's feeling weird. Hasn't come up. Definitely feels weird. Uh, no, he's hooked in the mouth. Why didn't you come up, dude? He's close to keeper size, but he's not keeper size. They let him go. Probably over 12, but not over 13. Big difference between 12 and 13, no doubt. Big difference. <laughs> Seems like it's more than an inch. Yeah, you know, it's kind of the great thing about spring fishing is finding the bait is 90% of the battle. If you find the bait, almost always you're gonna find the fish. Now, so far, the fish we've caught have not been big, but there are predators here for sure because there's so much prey. And this is such a classic spring pattern. Fish in this rising tide, you fish the areas that get drained on this fall, and when the water comes back on these flats, the specks move there and feast. Definitely prefer a rising tide this time of year if I'm targeting speckled trout, no doubt about it. Kind of passed up this point, but boy, it looks good. There he is on our point. Let's spy like here and sit here a minute. Keeper, you a keeper? You might be. You might be. It was a really hard hit, I know that. I think, mm, man, I don't know. Croaking male, he's kind of long. He might make it. Nope, he didn't make it. Another one of those woulda fish. Would have been legal last year. He wouldn't have been, because he probably even born last year, but one that size would have been. Oh, goodness. <laughs> There he is. Oh, you feel decent. Nope, I think you just foul hooked. Oh no, look at this pinfish. That's an unusual, ow, unusual catch for me. Called pinfish for a reason. Be good bait for somebody going offshore. All right, I'm gonna let this wind and this tide push me through here. Not a ton of water, just a foot and a half. But it should deepen up up here. I'm gonna throw this Versamax bolt, the 16th ounce death grip jig head and a Holy Jolie matrix shad. I got that rigged about maybe 20 inches. It'd be about perfect. Cause you know, I'm showing a foot and a half but that's from the bottom of my trolling motor. Still seeing a lot of bait in here. Water temp is 64. A little bit colder than I like to throw top water but I may give it a try before the day's out. Oh, there's one. That's a speck. Not a big one. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Didn't have to touch you. Got a persistent mosquito. Won't leave me alone. Should put on the spray, the skeeter hawk. Oh, there's another one. What? Lots of fish in here. We just got to find some big ones. This one's got a shot, but I don't think he's going to make it. He's 12 for sure, but he's not 13. He is not 13. See you, dude. Oh, man, I threw in his mouth. Obviously, they want the jig. <laughs> First cast, right in his mouth. He looked decent size when he jumped. We'll see if he's gonna make the cut. Hopefully we'll see. Oh yeah, it's good trout. Yeah, real good trout, all right. Oh. Came off, but he came off in the boat. It's your unlucky day, dude. About a 15 incher. He hit before I even engaged the reel. He was on as soon as I engaged. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Riley. Oh, there's a good fish. Good hit anyway. Oh, another flounder. <laughs> Goodness. Flounder number five for the day. These guys are everywhere. 
This guy's a little small to keep. And let him go. All right, one of the worst things you can do in fishing is try and force something that isn't there. <laughs> and that lake is obviously just full of a lot of little fish. So now this tide is ripping. I've come into a bayou that I've crossed through a whole lot. Got a lot of deep water, a lot of significant ledges. And I'm gonna see if I can catch some deep water speckled trout. This particular point has right here 12 feet of water. And obviously the bank's just right there. So significant ledge somewhere along here. Bunch of bends like this in this bayou. One of them's gotta have some fish, got to. The trick with any of these is figuring out how the fish are relating to it. And you just never really know. And I'd say about 20% of the ones that you hit whole fish. So gotta move a lot. Odds are against any particular one holding significant numbers of fish. Might catch one or two, but... All right, this spot looked really good, but sadly no fish. So time to hit the next one. All right, another point that looks even better than the last one. This one looks really good. Look at this mixing water right here. That's what I really look for. Uh, we're 10 feet right here, but I bet it's deeper on the other side of that. This, this spot holds a lot of promise. Oh, bite already. Well, that's a good sign. There's one. There we go. Well, you're not a keeper, but you're a start. First cast. First cast micro. You got any big ones down there, or is that it? Oh, man, all of a sudden the gnats have come out the woodwork. I guess that wind died. I gotta get the marsh romance. Goodness, they're terrible. Wow, mosquitoes, just awful. Whew. I don't know whether to put on marsh romance or skeeter hawk. I'm gonna go with the romance. That was kind of crazy. They're still flying around my face, but they're not landing on me. I mean, there's a million of them. There's another one. Oh, goodness, they're all gonna be babies. There's another one. Another baby, goodness. I guess they're all gonna be small. small and little Houdinis, escape artists. Oh, there's a fish. Same size and also Houdini. I'm gonna get on the other side here and throw back. Wind's blowing this way, current's moving this way sweeping everything too quickly and i really really like fishing against the current much prefer that let's see what this drop off looks like it's nine and a half feet right here it should be a ledge coming up yep there it goes beautiful ledge yep we're in 14 15 <laughs> 16 17 19, 20, you can see why there are fish here. All right, fish off the back of the boat. Pull it down that ledge and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Feels like it might be a decent one, maybe. Are you gonna make the cut? You are not, because you got off as well. I think he might have made the cut. 65 degree water, so they really go crazy when you hook them. But man, that's what, like five in a row we've lost? That was the only one it hurts to lose, because I think he would have taken a boat ride. Super important when you're fishing this way, against the current, 
in water this deep to let your bait get down to the bottom each time. That's where those fish are. That is one of the negatives to throw in a 3 8 ounce as opposed to a quarter ounce, so that the fish have a lot more leverage, throw the hook, it's more weight. And of course, trout go bananas when you hook them. They're masters at throwing a hook. You know, very soft mouths. You know, a redfish is just gonna try and rip the rod out of your hands. A trout's gonna be more sophisticated and come up and go nuts on the surface. Well, hopefully you can see it on video. This gives you a really good idea of what, what I look for when I do this. Gotta have swift currents, super important. I tried this this morning, but the tide was just barely trickling and it just wasn't happening. Oh goodness, that was a good hit. Were you gonna land him? That feels like a decent fish. Oh boy, that does. I don't know if we're gonna land him though. I'm fighting all this current, but man, he definitely feels like he's got an opinion. Come on, dude, stay on, please. Do me a favor, just stay on. I just wanna see you. Oh yeah, that's a real good trout. All right, there we go, there we go. That's the size fish you can catch doing this. I knew there had to be some around here. Let me get a picture of him for our thumbnail. That's a beautiful trout. He's about 18 inches, I'd say. Let's check. So we got the ruler out. Well, he's 17 and a half, so he's close to 18. I'm gonna keep him. So, so awesome. Discovering a new area to catch these springtime speckled trout. That fish hit it like he had bad intentions. That was, that was a really good hit. Hopefully we get some more like that. Oh, there's one, there's one. That feels like a good fish as well. Or he's file hooked. Feels kind of weird, might be file hooked. Might be a flounder, file hooked trout, who knows? Hopefully we get to find out. Definitely feels very, very weird. Yep, file hook. <laughs> Dude, chill out. Easy for me to say, I guess. I don't have a hook in me. Not big enough. It's amazing how many file hooked trout you catch doing this. I guess it's fish that just go up and check out the bait, decide the last minute not to hit it, or they just kind of swat at it, trying to kill it, kind of like they do with topwater baits and they just happen to get hooked. Oh, there's one. Might be another file hook fish. <laughs> Might be another file hook fish. Feels weird. Not a big one. I don't think. I think he's just file hooked. Well, it's actually a keeper that's file hooked. All right. If you're gonna file hook one, you might as well file hook a keeper. All right, it's a good croaking male. Oh goodness, that was a good hit. Doink. Feels like a keeper, feels like a keeper. Oh yeah, good fish. He's barely hooked, but we got him. All right. Love it when a plan comes together. Love finding stuff like this. Absolutely love it. Now, believe it or not, you can catch fish up to 20. Oh, man, I missed him. Up to 22 inches doing this. Seems crazy, but it's common. You know, usually these marsh fish are a lot smaller than that. Oh, there he is. It's every cast now, and that feels like another keeper. It's funny, once you catch one, it gets them all lit up and they start looking for something to eat. Yep, that's a keeper for sure. Good fish. Oh yeah, good fish. Real good fish. About a 16, 16, yeah, not 17, I'm gonna say 16. Open up, dude. Yeah, he had a deep. You just wanna bite me, don't you? I see the evil in your eyes. Look at that. Look at the evil. 
Now you see we discovered kind of the area that those bigger fish are holding. We started on the other side throwing this way and caught small ones on successive casts and kind of reposition casting down current and they are definitely feeding down here. What I really like about these matrix shads is the tail action. They have phenomenal tail action. So you know when you're fishing these things down current, that tail is just flapping. Those fish can't help but bite it. Now, the good news, this is early for this style of fishing. It really peaks in probably late April. Also good in May, although the fish do get a little smaller, I find, in May. April's when you catch the really nice ones, typically. It's just getting started. And it's just a super fun way to fish. Had a blitz of activity here, and now I've made a few casts without a bite, but that's not terribly uncommon. I don't know what happens if the school just kind of migrates and moves around. Oh, shoot. <laughs> or if the, the fish just get inspired and start feeding. I don't know what it is. I wish that one had stayed hooked up because he might have gotten the rest of them fired up. But they do tend to shut down and then you know, catch a few more and then they kind of shut down again. Definitely want to feed line while that bait's falling. And when it stops taking line, you engage your reel and just pick it up and put it down. The only mistake you can make is not letting your bait get back to, to the bottom after you hop it up. There's one. All right, that's a keeper. He tried to throw it. He tried to throw it. But he could not. Oh, well, he threw it in the boat. All right, big boy. Beautiful fish. Big spots on him. Beautiful. Oh, goodness. Threw in his mouth. Might be foul hooked, or it might be a red. Might be a red. Yeah, he's acting redfish like. Not big bull red. But a keeper red. He's over 16. I think. We're gonna check him. Dude, are you over 16? Uh, yeah, you're over 16. Yep. I'd bet money on it. Yep, 16 and a quarter. Redfish are here for the same reason. Scarfing up all this bait. There's one. It's coming up like a trout. Yep, he's a trout. Keeper trout. All right. Good trout. Real good trout. There he is. There he is. Not as big as the last, but a keeper. All right. There's one. Feels like a foul hooked one. No, he's not foul hooked. He's just nice. Oh, goodness. He's real nice. Dude. Oh, he broke my line. I'm glad you broke it in the boat, buddy. Yeah, you, you took this thing deep. No chance you were getting off. All right. We keep him or let him go? He's pretty big. I think I'm gonna let him go. Yeah, he's 18 inches. That's bigger than I like to keep.
All right, one thing I don't like to do when I'm fishing is be greedy. I've imposed on this boat a 10 fish speckled trout limit, and I've reached that. So I'm gonna quit fishing, leave these fish alone, leave some for next time or somebody else if they happen here or wherever these fish are gonna go in the summer. But it's always great finding a good bite like this, particularly at a new spot that you've never fished before. I'll be back to this one certainly, but I'll try and add to it next time and find others that also will deliver fish, fish in this pattern. Like I said, it's gonna be good for the next at least couple months, at least. Maybe even stretching into June. It's just super dependable. Again, you gotta hit a bunch of these kind of points with this mixing water. First one you hit probably is not gonna have fish. Eventually, you're gonna find one that does, and you're gonna figure out how to set up to maximize your bites, and we kind of did that today. Really, really fun. All right, so the hot bait, I was throwing this green hornet matrix shad. When I came here initially, I was throwing a shrimp creole. That's when I caught all those small fish. I switched to this, but I also kind of repositioned the boat, so I don't know which one was responsible for delivering those bigger trout. But hey, this green hornet's been so hot for me lately. Just got a lot of confidence in it, but really more important, I'll tell you this, in the bait color, is this 3 8 ounce depth grip jig head. I just love the depth grips. They're super sharp. Uh, they get down really, really well. They're probably a little bit heavier even than the 3 8 They hold bottom well. I just really love everything about them. So check out the depth grips. They're more expensive than jig heads that you can buy over the counter at a big box store, but it just they're just, they're just better. They're more expensive because it's a better product. You're gonna catch more fish. You're gonna lose fewer fish. Just, uh, just a fantastic jig head. All right, actually, the morning of this trip, I caught three flounder that I kept. In addition, that day, I caught two additional flounder that I threw back that were too little. Crazy, five flounder in one trip. Very, very unusual here. But you know I love to catch flounder. I love to keep them because they are so good to eat. So I'm gonna show you what I do with flounder. Now, I did a real similar recipe several years ago. I will link to that so you can see exactly what to do, but basically I debone the flounder. First thing, I scale them, get all the scales off, and then I use a knife, a very sharp knife, and some kitchen shears to entirely debone the flounder. Then after that, we're gonna stuff it. Let me show you what we need for the stuffing. All right, first off, I got some bread in here that I had in the oven, toaster oven. I had it in there for, I mean, like an hour just really drying it out. Now you can use store-bought breadcrumbs if you like. Obviously that'll work fine. I just prefer to make my own because I know what's in them. Also got some pecan halves, Worcestershire sauce, hawk sauce, which is hot sauce that's not terribly hot, just really, really tasty. Got some bacon that I cooked up. Got a honey crisp apple, any kind of apple will do. Now I buy green peppers in bulk and I freeze them. So I pulled out a couple of little slices of green pepper. Gonna throw that in there. Got an onion and a stalk of celery. Obviously, those of you who cook, you know this is the trinity. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna chop up our vegetables and then we're gonna get those going in the pan. All right, I ran my veggies through a food processor. I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking those down, getting those soft. I'm gonna do that in some butter. Ooh, that's a little hot. What a fair amount of butter. All right, while those are going, my apple was kind of big, so I cut it in half. I don't want, I'm not making apple pie, so I don't want a whole lot of apple. So I cut it in half, cut the skin off, cut the core out, obviously. I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up. I'm gonna throw the apple in the pan with the vegetables and let it all start getting soft. All right, I'm gonna go ahead throw the apples in. While that's getting soft, we're gonna go ahead and get our breadcrumbs ready. Let's do that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and now throw some pecans in there. Not a ton, just a little bit. Pecans and apple go really, really well together. All right, perfect consistency. Oh, I wanna show you something. I got Joel with me. Long time viewers know who Joel is. My son, he used to fish with me all the time. So he's gonna help me film this and lucky for him, he's gonna be the taste tester. So is Mrs. Marshman, who's over there doing some tax work. She's an accountant, but what you think, to, I'm ready to eat. I know, me too. Okay, I'm also going to go ahead and throw the bacon in there. Bacon, apple, pecans. Whew! This is going to be delicious. Oh, I made a mess. Don't tell Mrs. Marshman. All 
All right, that smells really good. All right, our veggies are pretty well done. They're pretty soft. You don't have to get them all the way soft because you are gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. And now flounder is a very lean fish, so you've gotta add a lot of fat to it. Now we've got a little bit of that with the bacon, but the main source of fat in this dish is gonna be butter. So I'm gonna add an offensive amount of butter to this. Some of you are not gonna like that, but it's definitely a key ingredient, super important. Now we already cooked down our veggies in some butter. We're gonna add a good bit more. We're gonna take a look at that, see how that looks once it melts down. But I bet we're gonna need more. Yep, we're definitely gonna need more. We'll put some more, we'll let that melt down and take care of some other things. All right, I also had a couple of redfish fillets. I'm gonna go ahead and put some stuffing in those as well. Just kind of coat it on the top of it. I'm not really gonna stuff it like we do with the flounder. But I've got two pans ready for the flounder and for the redfish. Go ahead and spray them so our fish doesn't stick. Okay, I think we've got just about the right amount of butter in here. Next thing we're gonna add is some Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire. If you've watched the channel before, you know that Liam Perrins is by far my favorite because it's quite frankly the best. More expensive than some other brands, but it's definitely well worth it. Just tastes the best. And I like to add a lot of this stuff. I'm a fan of Worcestershire sauce. About that much. Then we're gonna add our hawk sauce. Stuff's really good. You've seen me cook with it before. Not too much of that, just a few dabs. About that. And if you remember, this is our breadcrumbs, pecans, and bacon in here. We're going to go ahead and put that in. And it forms the base of our stuffing. Okay, we'll mix that all up. Now, quite possibly, we're going to have to add some more butter. But we're going to see what consistency this comes out as. All right, this is definitely a little bit dry. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more butter. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching, sorry. <laughs> I love to cook with butter. I just love it. It makes everything better. We've got to add some butter. All right, added some more butter, and that's definitely, it was definitely needed. It's, it's a much better consistency now. You want it to be kind of pasty, and it definitely is. All right, I got the oven going. It's almost preheated. Now let me get the fish, and we're going to go ahead and stuff it. All right, we're going to put the two redfish in this little pan. Like that, and our flounder are going to go in here. These aren't the world's biggest flounder but they're big enough to stuff. We're gonna open up the insides, form a pocket, and fill that up with stuffing. All right, the oven's ready, but so are we, we're almost ready. All right, here we go. Gonna fill up these pockets with our stuffing. About like so. We'll close those up in a minute. We got a bountiful amount of stuffing. I'm gonna go ahead and top these redfish fillets. It's kind of a sloppy mess with the redfish, but it'll be really tasty. This doesn't look as good as it does with the flounder. All right, one last step before we close these up. A little bit of seafood seasoning. This is Louisiana fish fry, it's my favorite. The one in the orange container, and this is the one I like the best. We're gonna go ahead and Top each one of these with some of this. And top our redfish as well. All right, now we're gonna close up our flounder. You can put a toothpick if, if you want to close it up and, and hold it. I don't really care. Actually, I think it kind of looks cool like that. This is so good. This is just one of my favorite things that I make. All right, that's it. Now they're ready for the oven. We're gonna be eating in 25 minutes. 25 minutes at 350. All right, here we go. We're done. We're pulling it out. That's our flounder. Look really, really good. Perfect. That's our redfish. Looks like a hot mess, but it'll be good. All right, let's see what Joel thinks. We'll probably give some to Mrs. Marshman too. She's over there drooling. So let me make a couple of plates. All right, we got three of us eating. We got three flounder. We're just gonna go ahead and scoop them out. We each get a whole fish. Uh-oh, this one's looking like it's sticking a little bit. Oh, that's not good. Hopefully the next one comes out easier. I'll go ahead and eat this one.
All right, hopefully I can get the last one out right. <laughs> All right, much better. That's how they normally come out. Get that extra stuffing on there. I'll give that one to... I'll give that one to Joel. He'll get the good one. I made some broccoli with butter and salt. Throw some of that on the plate. Counterbalance all that butter we have in the fish. All right, what kind of service is this, huh? This is awesome. <laughs> Treated like a king. So you better say it's good. Mmm, that's really good. The bacon is phenomenal. The apple gives a little bit of sweetness. Delicious, 10 out of 10. Awesome. All right, I screwed up the presentation on mine, obviously. It's a train wreck. But it doesn't matter, it will be really good. I know that. Here we go, stuffing, apple, fish, everything. Stuff flounder, so good. That's why I love catching these fish. So tasty. All right, well hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. You can do that by clicking that button right there. Also, here's two videos YouTube thinks you'll like. Check those out. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.